Hello again and welcome to another 5-minute Fly the Wing in-flight maneuver video. When training for your private pilot license, your instructor will demonstrate four different kinds of stalls. Now, these are in addition to the power on and power off stalls that you will learn, practice, and then perform on your checkride. You'll not be expected to demonstrate the four stalls I'm going to show you today, but you must be aware of them mainly so you know how to avoid inadvertently getting the airplane into any of these stalled conditions. You can read about these stalls in Chapter 4 of the Airplane Flying Handbook, but let's run through them quickly in the airplane. The easiest to demonstrate is the secondary stall. It occurs when you've not fully recovered from a preceding stall. Maybe you didn't reduce the angle of attack sufficiently during stall recovery, or you're trying to recover from a stall using power only. An elevator trim stall shows what can happen when the airplane is trimmed for landing and full power supplied for a go-around. It's important you maintain positive airplane control, overcoming those strong trim forces that want to pitch the nose up and to the left due to thrust, torque, and the spiraling slipstream. Fly the airplane and don't let it fly you into a stalled condition. The accelerated stall demonstrates that the airplane can stall at an airspeed higher than the straight and level stall speeds depicted in the POH. Whenever the airplane is in curved flight, there's an increased load factor due to centrifugal force opposing gravity that exponentially increases the stall speed of the airplane. Keep in mind the term accelerated stall does not relate to the airspeed of the airplane, but rather to the fact that the stall happens more quickly when your load factor is greater than 1G, such as in a sudden pull-up from a steep dive or an improperly performed steep turn. Like all stalls, it occurs when you exceed the wing's critical angle of attack. The last of the four stalls I'll demonstrate is one that continues to kill a few pilots every year. It's a cross-control stall, and it could happen if you overshoot your turn from base to final and become uncoordinated while trying to get back on center line. Now, normally you'd correct for overshooting final by increasing the rate of turn with coordinated aileron and rudder. But improperly trained pilots flying close to the ground may be leery of steepening the bank, so they foolishly try to increase the rate of turn by kicking in more low rudder in an attempt to slew the airplane around. This skidding turn tends to bring the high or outside wing up, so they then introduce opposite aileron, creating the cross-control condition and causing the nose to lower relative to the horizon. Their next mistake is to then react to the nose condition by increasing elevator back pressure, so they're in a skid, uncoordinated, while pitching up beyond the critical angle of attack. The airplane stalls and quickly goes into a counter-rotation known as a spin toward the low wing. Now, if this happens a few hundred feet off the ground, such as on a base to final turn, it's unlikely you'll have the time or altitude to recover. And the result is even more sudden and dramatic if you had 20 degrees or more of flaps in during the turn to final. I demonstrate this stall in the hope that you'll avoid getting yourself into this situation rather than believing you'll be able to recover from it in the traffic pattern. Other than demonstrating recovery from power on and power off stalls on your check ride, the whole point of stalls is in knowing what causes them so you can avoid them. In my normal everyday flying, the only time I ever stall an airplane is when the wheels are three inches over the runway. Remember, a stall can occur at any airspeed, altitude, or power setting. Don't let the wing ever exceed the critical angle of attack and you'll never stall the airplane. Keep the ball centered, always fly coordinated, and then even if you do stall the wing, you'll never enter a spin. Have fun, fly safely, and fly often, and I'll see you next time for another 5-minute Fly the Wing in-flight maneuver video.